Hello. <laughs> what are you doing, you silly little beast? Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel. And welcome to the gorgeous, most glamorous woman on the go, little Bisquisha do. I have disturbed your nap to make you famous online. <laughs> so, my lovelies, welcome back to another episode of Wife Swap New Zealand, girls. I... Cannot believe that the last video in this series, the first one in fact, created quite a stir on my channel. Actually, I fully can because the content we were watching was actually quite shocking. Is that delicious? Do you like that little serpent? Oh, are you licking the serpent? Oh, don't say that. <laughs> the title of that video was, Is This Weaponized Male Incompetence? Insufferable Curls. And it's actually one of the most commented on videos on my Chanel. And I think it's because we saw quite a lot of things that a lot of us are not very happy with watching, shall we say? No. So, one of the top comments on that episode of Wife Swap New Zealand Girls is by Ashley W. And they say, I love how Lay handles that small man. He's such an angry, entitled person, and I love how she just laughs him off and is like, I really don't care. <laughs> so, I'm gonna... Oh, I've got a lot to say about that sentence, actually, because I feel like if you have nothing invested in a situation, actually treating someone who is potentially in a similar vein to that man, like you don't care about their existence, is probably the best thing, because in their world, they are the most important person that's ever lived. Ever. However, if you find yourself in a situation in which they are an integral part of your life, it becomes a lot harder to have that attitude because that attitude is often met with aggression and anger because they are like, why aren't you seeing me as the most important person in the world? I'm dead. Oh. And I will never, 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 never give advice that says to upset someone like that. All I'm gonna say is, Plan your exit strategy if you find yourself in a situation like that. With that being said, I don't know what on earth we're going to see today, Biscuit. What do you think? I've often found wife swap from other parts of the world to not be quite this, um, intense, shall we say. Oh. I don't think so. Do you have, was that delicious? I'm going to put you on your little pillow and you can rest next to me while I shout on the internet. <laughs> Come on then, little Biscuit. So, my lovelies, grab your beverage today, courtesy of Roly. I am on the Monster Ultra Blue. Oh, hang on, there we go. This used to be my favorite flavor, and I haven't had it in ages. So, we're going to do a taste test today, girls. It's not really a test, it's more of a what is it? Like a taste revisit. Ah! Pop your ohanger right in your little New Zealand slit. I can't believe I just said that. And let's watch episode two of season one of Wife Swap New Zealand, girls. Meet the clean and green Lawson. Clean and green, Six girls. year old savvy, media professional Davian, and the passionate waste advocate wife. Christy, girls! Christy. So, one thing you need to know about the Lawsons is that we care about the planet and we want others to care about the planet too. Okay, one. that's a noble cause. Quite agree, especially with what's actually happening right now in the world. New York is covered in a blanket of. Peace, sweetie! Smog? Is it called smog? Pollution from the Canadian wildfires that appear to be a direct correlation between the rising global temperatures and the frequency in forest fires. Even though some people on Twitter are like, No! No! It's just, it's just people in the forest setting fires! Not always. Believe it or not, forest fires are actually a normal part of a forest cycle. It's just that they're happening so frequently, the forest can't recuperate after its natural part in that cycle. So, let's not talk about any more about that, shall we? Let's listen to the last one. 10,000 plastic bottles can make a pack bent. You can expect to see me preparing oh, meals me. that have been purchased without packaging. You can expect Shaped. to see me making some of my own products. So I make simple things like my own toothpaste and deodorant. She's a chemist! A few things for the kitchen as well. Although that did look like pure bicarbonate of soda mixed into a paste and then applied to the teeth. I would say, I know it's like a home remedy to use bicarb of soda for things, but it is far too strong to just fully apply to your teeth, hair or nails. It's just so strong. There's a reason why we have formulas in things like toothpaste because everything is like considered. Like, yes, you can mix lemon juice and baking soda together and apparently you're going to get whiter teeth, but you're also going to completely scrape off your enamel and permanently damage your teeth. So let's not do any of all that. No, there are some good alternatives you can use. I can't think of a single one off the top of my head, but please take to YouTube. Oil in the I'm blender. Really I'm to see my mommy helping the planet. Six years old. Do you remember my being six years old? My parents couldn't give a shit about the planet when I was six years old. No! What was I doing at six years old? Probably crying in karate. 
wrong about some of these ideas. She likes to get her opinions across. Bread? What are we doing? <laughs> Smothering bread? My mission is for every New Zealand household to be That's zero waste. So that is my high. dream. So our rubbish bin is about this kind of size and we fill that once a month and most of what you'll find in there are fruit stickers which I can't stand. Why do they have to put it on every single piece of fruit? We don't consume meat. Um, we have massively reduced our dairy consumption also. Probably the most time intensive thing that I do to reduce waste in our house is making my own soy milk and I make it in a big batch and I put it in the freezer and I do that once every fortnight. That is amazing! I love self-contained, self-sufficient households. I love it so much. There was a really good YouTube channel here on YouTube about someone who left the rat race of London to go and live in the west of Ireland and just made his entire land self-sufficient to himself. Recently he's had to stop because it's kind of sad. It's Mossy Bottom. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. To me, in my audacious nature, I'm very much of the opinion that one day I could very much leave city life and become a homesteader. And I actually think I could. I've got the chemistry background. I'm very handsy with my hands. Handsy, oh dear. Very handy with my hands, shall I say. And I actually really like being outdoors. I don't like getting dirty, but there are ways to combat that, aren't there? Big titty lady videos on the internet. I cannot bear the idea of making my own soy milk though. A, because I think I have an intolerance to soy milk. Maybe not when it's fermented, but definitely like straight up soy milk. But also Mrs. Oat, she is the goat. Right. Lick that book. Right, we're gonna see like across town of the fit and faithful Hughes family. Oh. Dad, Ben, 12-year-old Amira, Amira, seven year old Tyree, Tyree. Noah, who's six, and Noah goes. Leah, who's three, and of course our wife, Danielle. Our wife. About two months ago, we were self-sufficient, living off the grid. Um, we grew our own animals, we ate them as well. Two One months ago. Three. We absolutely love CrossFit. I think it's more so mentality and physically. Okay, CrossFit ladies. Ben constantly works 24-7. It does keep him away from home. I like when I stay at home mum because I get, I'm more involved with the children. Right. If it Thank works, you. it works. However, I feel like a lot of the time in this show, a hands-off approach to your children is not a good one. <laughs> oh, wow. scandalous. It's nice thing we eat meat and vegetables and stuff like that. Yes. But we try and keep a high intake of meat. Proverbs, I guess. You try and keep a high intake of meat. So well, we're messianic really believers. Good. We're the Jewish side Depends. of Christians. We believe in Jesus, but um, okay. we call him Yeshua because that's his, his Jewish name. Do you see someone who thinks himself wise? There is more hope for a fool than for him. I'm just going to say straight out the bat, I am not religious. I am an atheist through and through. However, if you have a personal relationship with what you consider God and you follow a very free and welcoming lifestyle, then I see no problem with being religious. We do Bible studies, we go to church, and we kind of do our own Sabbath and our own family in that. Danielle sees the opportunity to have a new wife in the household as purely positive. Whenever they say, like, a new wife, I'm like, are we gonna have lesbian marriages? That's what I feel like they're saying. She could possibly bring in some good things. I'm yes. a bit uptight, so she could probably relax the family out. I get home and they're like, just, you know, relax out. Chill like, out, girl. Take good. your weight <laughs> off your stump. Butterfly. Right, okay. What's gonna happen in this episode? It's the morning. Are we going to have a nice, calming, lovely episode today, or are we gonna have abject chaos? I like rusty spoons. The swap, and Christy and Danielle are packing up to leave home. Pack your bags, girl. It's time to leave. It's not every day you get the opportunity to walk in someone else's shoes. No. I've never been away true. for this long before. I'm really, really nervous. I don't know what I'm going into, so I don't know what I'm packing for. Let's go. You're going to be making your own soy milk, girls. These houses are gorgeous. Okay. Be good. Be good. The families aren't allowed any communication for the week, so okay. they must hand over their phones before they go. This is the first time we've seen that, though, isn't it? This is Casey's. Bye! Right. Goodbye! Bye. Neither of the couples have any clue oh, at all who they'll topics. swap with. I think it's really easy to get stuck in your routines. Yes. And so I want to take this opportunity to take stock of my own life yes. and also 
just learning about someone else and the way that they think and the way they do things. I think it's very easy as humans for us to get stuck in our own ways, especially for me as someone with ADHD, I very much have like very specific routines for how things are done. And quite often they don't get done because my ADHD is like, <laughs> so I feel like an experience like this for me would be difficult, but also perhaps in the long run, quite useful, I guess. As long as I didn't get some absolute hateful male energy in the dynamic somehow, then I would be fine, I think. I think it would actually probably benefit my life to do something like this, but I'll never get married, so. Ew. What an interesting shot, very Beetlejuice. After a long drive, the wives arrive and get their first impressions. Right. First impression. I hate it! I'm in a tulip skirt and I hate it! Ah. How many kids have they got? Oh my god. One, two, three, maybe three, maybe four. Oh, she's got a B tech. So she's suddenly getting, she's Back suddenly chewing. being put in with like loads of children. I don't children. think this is a vegetarian household somehow. No. Did you think you were going to get a vegetarian household? The wives are about to see their new homes and they're looking for clues. Right. Clay. It's very like, <sighs> I'm going to burgle the house. Oh, it's the cat burglar. Ooh, it's a religious family. Yeah. What kind of religion is this? Before they meet their new families, Christy and Danielle get a chance to have a good poke around their new homes. Something quickly catches Christie's eye. Beef, stir fry, veggies. That's dinner, I'm guessing. I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I guess this does actually raise a bit of a difficult question of like, is it ethical if you're a vegetarian to then like cook meat for other people if you don't ever cook it yourself? Like, I don't know, is there like, there could be danger involved, I guess. I mean, like you can obviously be like, no. I mean, I've got a dog, so I cook meat all the time and my boyfriend eats meat. I'm vegetarian, so I don't, but it's like, I don't have an aversion to cooking it, I don't think. I'm not sure, sometimes I'm a bit like, that is absolutely foul and I cannot be near that. But something that's really basic, like, I don't know, chicken strips, I'm like, that's okay, because it's just like little pink fleshy bits. Ugh. Whereas someone who's maybe been vegetarian their whole lives might not even know how to cook, like, meat. Huh. We're getting into it today, girls, aren't we? Meat hoomst. Is this breast milk? That, no. Soy milk. Oh, really? Ugh. Chicken. That's not breast milk. <laughs> I, I've literally never cooked meat before. No meat ah, in here whatsoever. I'm... I wouldn't want a vegetarian who's never cooked meat. If I was a meat eater, I would never want someone who's never cooked meat ever to cook me dinner because I'd be like, I'm probably going to be very upset, Tommy. Yes? Not too sure what I'm going to do. Head, I love a human head. Meat. Very sustainable. Lots of packaged goods. I guess I expected that. Yes, Danielle that and Christy how, have like, each written a detailed considered. manual explaining the rules no, and customs here. of their new house. They've been to the works. Christy, welcome to our humble home. We have three people in our family, myself, my husband, husband. and our just turned six-year-old daughter, Savannah. Husband been four kids. Four children. <laughs> it's gonna be a busy week. Yes, it is. You're going to work very hard. We are a plant-based household. I'm not sure what kind of diet you eat, but in the event that your diet includes meat, my preference is that it isn't cooked at our house. The meat thing is the hard part because we come from a faith-based lifestyle and the Bible it says that we're meant to eat meat. So yeah. Raised Masonic Jew. There is debate in Messianic Judaism about the Romans manuscript. However, Romans 14.21 states it is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. Humble ourselves for our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Family are very strong followers of Yeshua, commit our whole life around the world of a Donai, God, and serving others. Yes. Because we aim to be a zero waste household. So if they're serving others, surely that means that accommodations can be made for people who are not in the same dietary requirements of them. Yes? No? Is that not what that means? Servants of others? We avoid buying packaged food, particularly plastic packaging. The only plastic packaging that comes into our house are the plastic seals that are on the lids of some jars, yes. bottles, and packaging. You know what? Plastic was not in the Bible. Sunscreen, condoms, 
Okay. Um, <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Wait, what did she just say? So the plastic seals there are on the lids of some jars, bottles, packaging for sunscreen, condoms. Okay. Um, <laughs> That was weird. <laughs> why is that weird? CrossFit training, now that's different. I don't even... Why, why is talking about sexual health weird? I don't even know what CrossFit is. What is CrossFit? Uh, you're going to have an experience, girl! Bed at 9 before bed is Bible study. I don't think I'll be able to help much with Bible study, unfortunately. We don't have any fussy eaters, all eating everything and very big eaters, so be prepared to cook extra because we all eat large quantities. Okay. Quantities of mints, okay. The food stuff's gonna be a challenge. The Bible stuff's gonna be interesting. But now the time yes. has come for Chris. So far, it feels like this episode is very like, everyone's a bit like tentative. They're like, well, we might see a little bit of difficulty. Girls, oh no, what's gonna happen next? Uh Deranged. We're not seeing any explosive statements yet. We're not seeing any divisive statements. Everyone's being very welcoming, very business and I don't know about you, but I'm getting a vibe that that may not be the way the whole way through. Because if it was just like, and we had a lovely week, there wouldn't be a television show, would there? No. Hold on to your titties. Hi. Hi. I don't <laughs> like that skirt. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Christy. Nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. Are you Aaliyah and yes. Did I say your name right? Hi. Hello. Can you check in? Can you check in? Check Do you high five? High five. Yeah. It's nice hey. to meet you. Yeah, really nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is Amira. What have you done to yourself? Gymnastics. Oh, oh. dangerous sport. Hi, I'm Christy. Really nice to meet is you. Is it sore? Sport? There's a dog outside. No, no, that's good. Hi, guys. Hi. This is Tyree. This is Tyree oh, and Noah. Noah, yes. Shake hands. This is a bit weird, hey? Hi. Yeah, that was made very strange. <laughs> it's easier to meet two people, isn't it? You're like, hello, hello. You making yourself at home? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Hi. Oh, you're really pretty. Oh, she's nervous. <laughs> uh, so before we, before we come, we were at that. Um... You know, I was such a shy child. In fact, nowadays, I still am quite painfully shy. I'd like to say I'm an extroverted introvert. If you're in my inner circles or... My circle of acquaintances, I am very extroverted with you. Painfully shy, it's probably all the trauma, girls. CrossFit. Yeah. Just down the road. I'll be honest, I don't know much. Does the baby do CrossFit? Oh, okay. I'm totally willing to give it a go, but yeah, you'll probably be laughing a little bit because I won't be very good. We or should be brand new. Aren't vegetarians. Okay. But we do live a self-sufficient lifestyle. Okay. So very, very interesting and so that's... really and fully open to trying you guys. Cuisines. That's okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, most people have vegetables in their diet. They don't just eat meat. Like, you just expand your knowledge of vegetable-based items. I, this, is, this is one of the things about, like, meat eaters that I really, that sometimes really confuses me, is that they feel a meal isn't complete without meat. In fact, actually, humans are meant to have, like, lesser meat, more vegetables, because that's where we get most of our nutrients from. I mean, when you season meat, you're seasoning it with plants and vegetables. You're getting the flavor. So I don't understand when people say things like, oh, you know, uh, a dish without meat is like a food without flavor. It's like, well, not really, because seasoning, you don't use other meats to season meats, really. You use vegetables, herbs, plants, spices, all sorts of exciting things. Or maybe with oyster sauce, the case of an oyster. Quite simple, like meat, vegetables, maybe rice or potatoes. Yeah. As simple as it, so maybe chicken. So I guess because maybe <laughs> they're like very fitness based, this is why we're hearing yeah. meat, vegetables, carbohydrate. Meat, vegetables, carbohydrate. <laughs> Meat, vegetables, carbohydrate. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous because um, I don't eat meat and oh, okay. I've never even cooked meat. Christy doesn't eat meat, so it's interesting, I think, because we eat meat every day. <laughs> I think I'm going to get quite hungry over the next six days unless I can sneak away for some food somewhere. And the religious side of things is a little bit nerve-wracking, I guess, as well, because, I, yeah, that's not really my my thing. What's your milk that you drink in the fridge? Um, so we drink soy milk. Oh, it's soy milk, okay, yes, yeah. That my, well, occasionally, 
make, but mostly my wife makes. Okay, then no, that is so cool because I honestly thought it was best milk. Yes, could you imagine? <laughs> she was probably sheerly panicking. Probably like, okay, no, well, we'll I don't want to look at any boobies. Another like fifteen look hours. Look at his mushroom oh, top. Yeah, so cool. If it's breast milk, there's something <laughs> my wife's not telling me, right? <laughs> Quite. I guess I am most nervous about having different ideas and ideals to than she has. Everyone seems really calm It's just very so different. Far. It's just a bit um, awkward. A person that I wouldn't actually relate to outside of this. OK. Are you sure? The first test for our two wives with contract... Although they're both self-sufficient, apparently. So that's surely a huge lifestyle aspect that's actually very much in common. There are lots of things to be shared between those two ideals, no? Fasting diets is dinner. Tofu dinner, girls. And chickpea curry dinner, with ladies. Spring greens. Cool. That sounds all right. Sounds nice. Right. 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 How long does this take to cook? We should start cooking this first. The meat first, and then. And then this. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is definitely going to be a learning curve for me. Do you mind if I just give you quite a um, simple job of cutting up the onion, the red onion? Yeah. And, and finally chopping the garlic. Oh. You're right with handling the meat and... I'll be honest, it's not my favourite thing to do. Yeah. I, I don't have to handle it, though. No, no, no. I can just dump yeah, it yeah, in, right? Pretty much. And then get a spoon and... Yeah, yeah. you don't really have to touch it. <laughs> I don't mean to offend you. No, no, no. <laughs> These kitchens appear to be quite dark. A kitchen's quite this. dark. Look at that! That's so nice. <laughs> and then we just chop it up or something. Pretty much, yeah. You know it's done when it's turned brown. Yeah. OK. Great. That's just paper, is it? Is that paper? Is that a metal object in a Teflon pan? Yes. OK. No! We should really get a compost bin. That would be a good idea, yes. Yeah, they're really Self easy. Self-sufficient compost. So there's a recycling bin here. OK. Oh, <laughs> you got stuff in here that's not recyclable. You know that, eh? How do you use? Like there's bananas and oh, the ban plastic bags and. Oh, so many kids, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. We're going to teach your kids about responsible cute. recycling. Yeah. Responsible recycling. Yeah. Look at ho Oh, look, a little meat dish. That is a tiny plate. Oh, is it for children? That would make sense. Can I set up. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Why aren't you eating the same as us? Um, because we don't eat meat in our house. That is not a meal. I don't eat either. Because we don't want to hurt animals, and because the impact of farming on the environment and what it does to the rivers and yeah. Oh. But God made animals for a reason. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We can agree to disagree on that. There's no way I'm not stopping eating meat. No, I don't want you to stop eating meat if it's your choice. <laughs> oh, she was very courteous there. I this is one thing where I feel I might upset a couple of people here who might be religious. I think that the natural way of order has been severely severely impacted by the way that humans produce meat. I do not feel that slaughterhouses were put here by a divine creature to make meat available in plastic packages in supermarkets. I think that is disingenuous, should we say, and I feel like the time in which most religious texts were created, the way of life was very different to what it is now, and I feel like a lot of those teachings were relevant and are now not quite so relevant. And I feel like certain things might need to be updated because I don't think that the statement, God put animals here for a reason, and therefore the reason that we eat them, I don't think that that is a very healthy way to view a living creature on this planet. I'm not sure whether they know any vegetarians or whether they just think I'm a The thing is, you will get religious vegetarian people. Point, I don't know. <laughs> Next on Wife Swap, next. Danielle's oh, new home next, is girls. all... Fry the butter! It's the morning it's of the their morning, second day. It's the morning, girls. Is there going to be enough bananas? The Hughes is... Right. What a... Yeah. Take me and out, girls! And in the Hughes' no. household, Christy is dealing with four children. And her morning and tasks box? include breakfast, lunch boxes, yes. and bed making. A bed, a boudoir. So... 
She hasn't done any like baked baked food or anything, mm. Danielle. So I just grab stuff from the pantry, some fruit and yeah, some, and some yogurt and stuff. Cool. And Ben yeah. is off to work. Just a quick what question about do? Aaliyah. Do we bring food to her for, for daycare? Yeah, yeah. So same thing as the, the boys and that. Same you know. thing as what yeah. they're eating. And has she got her own little lunch box? Yeah, lunch box will be in the pantry. On the pantry. Right. Okay. In the right, pantry, cool. girls. Do a pantry right. tour. Have a good day. Awesome, you too. Enjoy your day. Bye. Oh, it's very awkward, isn't it? It's like, I don't really know you. Meanwhile, over at the Lawsons, Davian has already dropped Savvy at school, right. but has an unusual task for Danielle. Send a bitches home like a heart attack. Right. Can you please make some hair product for us today? I can try. Have you make noticed some I haven't had any for the last couple of days? And I'm dying, so... OK, cool. I'm right. dying um, for my hair so... product. What do we want? Time travel. When do we want it? It's irrelevant. Oh, he's a little bit of a quirky nerd. A little bit. That recipe there. I'm not too sure if so, I'm capable of recipe. filling her shoes. You're trying to oh, fill the shoes Oh, that looks like a very easy recipe. No melting satirical alcohol there. She's got a degree. That's difficult. You're welcome. Have a good day. Difficult to fill someone's no, shoes. I suppose so. She's awesome. But she has less children, so maybe like, that's really less of a workload. She's a whole person. Like, she's, there's so much to her. Can we do that off for a second? <gasps> Can I talk to you? <laughs> have you made your beds? Let's go up and check, shall we? Christy's still in the thick of it. It's OK. Looks decidedly unmade. Are these your clothes? No? Who's are they? All right, so we're just going to fold it up. I'm going to put it in the middle. There we go, compromise. OK, this needs to hop off the floor. 40 grams of beeswax. 35 grams of shared butter, 15 grams Shea of butter, girl. roots, and then we have peppermint, 2 grams of vitamin E. Can I hold my hand? Oh, Here's that's go. actually quite a good natural formula. Shea butter is incredibly hydrating on the skin and the hair. You'll find it in a lot of like heat protectant creams, like heavy duty, heavy moisturizer, oil based creams. I like putting a little bit of shea butter in my chemical formulas, my skincare formulas, because it gives it that really luxury slip. Ah, oh, love it. Okay, she might have to green. How does this one work? Oh, this is a much oh, nicer skirt. Oh, it's an IQ test, and I haven't passed. <laughs> beep, beep, bitch, you've burnt it. <laughs> is there anything more frightening or instantly alarming than a fire alarm? I feel like frantically trying to wave at a fire alarm is so annoying. Not a fire alarm, a smoke alarm. Oh! See ya. Do you know, I used to live in a place where my smoke alarm used to be like, beep, beep, beep. There is a fire. Beep, beep, beep. There is a fire. It was so bizarre. I've never experienced anything like it. I burnt toast once and I was like, why is there a woman talking to me about fire? She's dead. Oh my goodness. Beep, beep, bitch. Oh, dying. What did she burn? The shea butter? Okay. No, they. We made it out of the house. Well done. I think it's going to be the best wax he's ever had. So, um. Right. Sorry, Christy, I think I've got this one. With their morning duties over, and Christy dog. has returned home to a surprise. Right. Little oh, didn't. my God. Oh, dear. <gasps> the cat has shat in my bedroom. Me. Uh, in your bedroom? Oh, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. In your bedroom? That's so bad. Oh, what no. What is this cat eating? What is this cat eating? <laughs> Dear God, but my daughter's poo did not smell as disgusting as that. There's shit everywhere. There's dog shit there, there's dog shit there. Oh, they're lovely people, but why do you want to be surrounded by crap? Uh... Danielle's dame. I wonder if they're vegetarian to the point of like, we don't believe in pets, because that is a movement within the vegan and vegetarian communities. I don't really agree with that, if I'm honest with you. I think my life has been infinitely enriched by having a little dachshund. And his life has too. He couldn't exist in the wild. Packs of little biscuits. Garibaldi girls. But the idea of having just like cat feces in your bed, it's not for me, girls. No, thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, has been less dramatic since she made the hair wax. Right. On my way to pick up Savannah. The lifestyle seems quite calm. The Lawsons normally do the school run by bike. 
The responsibility of having to bike home with someone else's child was a bit different. I felt that the responsibility on me was a lot heavier than it normally is. Yes. Hi, baby. Although, if she's on a bike as How well. How's school? Good. Good. She's like... No, she was like, don't touch me! I don't like it when you touch me. Good girl, Savannah, you're doing so well. Do you want something to eat? Do you want some avocado? That okay. was really Thank easy. You. Her life has gone from like chaos of four children to just like cycling home to avocado. <sighs> Living the dream. Oh, yeah. Aww. And I like it because it's a lot just like mine. Is it? Christy's I like my hair because it's like mine. It's a little more busy. Aww. Deranged. How is school, guys? Boring. 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 I'm having such a strange experience watching this episode because everyone is so like... If I didn't know any better, I'd feel like we're bubbling up to a fight. Oh, step one. Was there no good bits at all? It is a challenge to keep track of all the kids, yeah, what they imagine? have eaten, have they gotten out of their school of uniforms, have they put their bags away. You need to get out of school uniforms and put school bags away. Across town, Danielle has a surprise for Savannah. Yes, what is it? I went got you this morning. <gasps> I ran all the wow. way to get it and all the way back. But it may not be so innocent as first meets the eye. Oh, it's because it's plastic. Turn and try it on. Oh, look. You look really pretty. Davian and Christy have a strict policy of no single-use plastic in the house, and headbands are no exception. Headbands are not single-use. We do have trouble on occasion with gifts. For example, when Savannah has her birthdays, we say, actually, please, we don't need any gifts, but if you do want to bring a gift, make it zero waste, you know, you know, made out of something not plastic. Savannah, you are going to take really good care of that, aren't you? That's the tricky thing, right? Very well-meaning and lovely. I mean, she, well, it was totally out of the blue. She's going to use it a lot, I'm sure. <sighs> OK, single-use plastic. Shall we talk about that for a second? Yes, they are a plague on society and we should absolutely get rid of them. One hundred percent. However, there are some things in this world that need to be single-use plastics. A lot of it comes to, like, the medical industry. However, Unicode, like, this could have been a fun DIY craft situation, I think. You could have made this from wood, from paper, from cardboard, from packaging that you've already bought, from flowers in the garden, maybe even a little bit of, like, crayon and wax colouring. Like, this could have been a fun little DIY project, if it was necessary to be that. They're also on a TV show. They've got a couch. They've got all this furniture in their house, so you can never really be that far away from single-use items or packaging or wrapping or anything like that. So a one-off, I can understand, but he does seem quite reasonable in saying that, you know, it's wonderful that she's brought this gift for her. I do wonder if this is maybe a step for production, though, because it's like, why don't you buy her a plastic headband and see how the father reacts? Why don't you just bubble it up for drama, girls? Why aren't you making it to the pageant? I do feel like if they wanted to make this headband, like, less single-use plastic, they could come up with some sort of game, I don't know, of like, let's talk about what we did at school today. Let's put on the unicorn hat and listen Listen to the unicorn Cancelled. and then pass it around the house or something and listen to someone say something about their day. You know, you can make items like this more valuable by making them part of a, I was going to say a ritual, <laughs> by part of a routine. Oh dear. But not explosive. Just when Christy CrossFit she's got things under control, Ben springs a CrossFit session on it. Right. Leapfrog ladies. Oh dear. <laughs> That is, no, never. Yeah. Of course it's going to be difficult. She's only just it's started. It's not really my idea of a good time. That was my first and last time doing CrossFit. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, As how are they going to switch in. the rules? What are they going to be? <laughs> it's games time at the Hughes's, and right. the neighbours have popped round to join in. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Despite the earlier setback with the hairband, Danielle's feeling rather relaxed. You didn't even write a sentence. Oh, what? I mean, like, 
If that was a production plan to try and make things more dramatic, the earlier setback with the headband, that is very, very, very mild, tepid drama. I don't know how the series of these sorts of things are filmed. I don't know in which order they're filmed in, but I wonder if the producers saw what happened in the first episode, if it's filmed in the order it's released, which probably it isn't. But if they did see how that guy was reacting and how hostile the environment was, maybe they were like, shall we just bring it all the way back and just have like a headband drama? Bump it up with Bump It. Get that salon style look, fast and easy. Oh, isn't that nice? It's gone already. Yeah. Oh, Exhalation. What the heck? <laughs> I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your kiss me has flourished again. For Christy, Bible time means things aren't quite so raucous. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your Phil 413! <laughs> Today I saw a bearded, evil-looking bird, <laughs> butterfly, thing, hanging upside down on a rainbow. This seems so fun. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared my distress. The next day can't come sooner for Christy. So it's my rules starting tomorrow. So things are about to change in this house. It's going to be interesting. I, I want, so, uh, like, I'm very. I miss my family. I miss my kids. I, love, I miss my dog. I don't know. I feel like is something going to happen or not? Coach. Am I on the edge of my seat for nothing? Um, I miss my gym, my CrossFit. It's the next day, the day of the Swap Girls. Uh After two days living under their house rules, yes. Christy and Danielle are chomping at the bit to make... We're going to learn about composting! It's about how it will go down with their adoptive families. Right. I feel a little bit worried about one of the rules that I may write regarding um, meat and how it, you know, savvy will go. So I think it could be that she's um, been influenced not to eat meat rather than knowing the reason why. I think that Amira might wait, be a little bit suspicious. Wait, wait, let's not talk about influencing. Hmm, interesting. Just of, of what we're doing and maybe, I don't know, I don't know if she thinks that I'm judging her house or she can be a bit of a oh, I don't know, you know, if she says something like, are the parents influencing the child to not eat meat? You could then put the argument of like, are those parents influencing their child to be religious? I'm just quite hard to read. Right, let's see. It's time to reveal all. So, oh from God, today this on, we are living by my rules. These, everyone's t-shirts in this show have been very strange. It's been strange. really interesting living here with you guys. I okay. think you're an awesome family. Yes, but. Um, but some of the things that happen in this household have been making me feel a little bit uncomfortable. In general, there's a lot of waste going on. Oh, and right. not a lot of awareness about environmental awareness. issues. So I would like to change that. Well, that's commendable. I understand you don't go to church, and I respect that, but I would like you to experience the importance of our faith and join me in some Bible study. Ooh, also, follow don't me agree. in some Dislike. of our practices, including prayer before meals and bed. Nope. <laughs> Very strong. <laughs> uh, okay. This household creates a lot of plastic waste. That's going to change. So from now on, we're going to massively reduce this family's plastic consumption. Right. I would like you to try a meat option because we eat it as a protein and it is a custom in our beliefs. You're going to have to let me think about that for a bit. Has Savvy eaten meat before? Have you, Savannah? Have you eaten meat before? No. Well, that would make her ill. In my house, my kids do jobs in the home to earn money. I think work and reward are very important. Right. So I'd like you and me to go out and see if the neighbours would like their cars to be washed and if we can earn a bit of money, have fun and spend it at the shops. OK, it all sounded great and then the spend it at the shops, but um, it, was, it was all about, you know, which shops and what exactly we'd be spending it on. It's my experience, it's my rules. Do you like lollies? <laughs> Toys. Cleaning products off. 
Oh, this is very strange. This is very, very strange. This is, okay, this is taking a turn because it's like every, it's like very polite people are suddenly upset at a dinner party. It's like, no, we have made conscious choices to remove things from our life and you are adding them back in. That is a bit like, mm, I don't feel like that. I don't think it's ethical to say to vegetarians, I'm gonna make you eat meat. And it is also not ethical to say, oh, you're atheist, I'm gonna make you read the Bible. I'm gonna make you partake in religious activities. Just like it is not really that ethical for an atheist to be like, stop doing all that. We're not doing any of that. Mm, mm, mm. I went to very religious schools growing up, which is probably why I'm so satanic now. I feel like the structure of religion is actually appalling and we need to take it back to something like a personal relationship with the world around you and whatever being you think is in charge of that whichever god gods or deities you would subscribe to so this is ve this is going to create some tensions i think this sort of an environment no one likes being told what to do when it comes to like fundamental living systems so are we in for a, are we in for some drama i just don't know oh contain chemicals that harm the environment. Yes. It's easy to make your own. We're going to make our own toothpastes and deodorants from now on. Right. I don't think Amira's real excited about her ideas. I don't think Christy's taking into consideration how busy we, we are during the week and the things she's asking us to do could be a bit too much. You seem like a different person right now than you, were, <laughs> than you have been in the last three days. Hold on to it. For Christy, the first new rule involves dinner. A whole vegetarian. Um, I'm making a Thai green curry. Amazing. Oh. Mm -hmm. How am I making it? Yeah, but without the chicken. You can hang out in the kitchen if you want, Aaliyah, but you're not next to the stove, okay? Curry paste. I'm gonna put this in so you need half of it. Not the whole not the whole jar, okay? Just half. I love the fact that the cooking is a very family oriented half? experience. Hold on. I feel like there is so many ways of cooking food in which will make meat eaters not miss meat. Because the reality is, with a little bit of like planning, most people can grow their own fruit and vegetables. It's very different to like raise an entire herd of cows and then slaughter them for your own meat. So by process of elimination, it should be much more straightforward to cook your own food from scratch using plant based materials than not. So I wonder if maybe there's gonna be something else in this conversation. I will also say there is very much a strange like marketing around meat. And when you don't eat meat, you can really see it. A lot of cultural norms are based around meat. And when I say cultural norms, I say things like uh, masculinity is inherently related to like meat. And it's a very strange marketing ploy that's kind of happened because actually meat, ha meat as we know it in this day and age isn't very healthy. It's not like most red processed meat is not actually very good for you. And a cleaner plant-based diet is actually more beneficial in the long run. And there have been studies done on this to actually prove what I'm saying here. But what I'm saying is there is an association with meat and status. And that is something that I feel like people have the problem with breaking. Because most people happily eat fruit and vegetables. Most people will. But there's always this thing of like, oh, if I don't eat meat, am I even have, do I even feel like I've had a proper meal? Has the marketing made me feel less like a man by not eating meat? And is it seen as glamorous and status marvoilier to go to a restaurant and not eat meat? Do you know what I mean? So I feel like there's, there's around like the culture of meat eating, there's so many other things that need to be sort of like understood alongside actually just eating meat. Does that make sense? There's like a, I don't know, there's like a thing around it. It's, it's like meat eating is here and then there's all this like influence around it. It's very strange. Half is about there. Half a teaspoon of green women. I'm good, thank you. Danielle's okay. role change lunch plan is very different, starting with a prayer. How do you feel Sushi. like praying before, I can say the prayer, but before we eat? I'm okay with that. Are you okay with it? Yeah, Maybe? see, that's like... Okay, so we normally close our eyes. So okay. you can just look down if you like. Okay, so. okay. Dear Lord, thank you for the food that we've received. Thank you for my new family. Please bless us as we eat. In Yeshua's name, Amen. 
See, that's 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 like quite pleasant. So I it's have part of the ritual, the ritual of belief. That have chicken and corn in it. Would you be open to trying a little bit? I know that I won't. Okay. Savvy, would you be open to trying a little bit? Ah. Uh, you interesting. sure? <laughs> First it was prayers, and now Meat gets the thumbs down from Savvy. Well, she did no, Savvy didn't give thumbs down to the prayer, let's be honest. She didn't say no. If a child is like put in a situation like this who's never experienced it before, they're not gonna know what it is. It's gonna seem weird. Quite frankly, kind of agree. It is kind of strange to be like, no, before we do anything, we must invoke the ritualistic rites of those who have died before us. That is kind of strange. But it's also, she didn't also say thumbs down. I think, you know, saying, being thankful for where your food comes from, being thankful and taking a second to think about what it is that you're eating is not like, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think she said thumbs down to that. She's also six years old. So, you know, does she even know what a thumb is? It's ketamine and MDMA. So I hope it tastes good. This will actually be quite good with chicken. <laughs> Okay. You like it? Good. The veggie curry goes down surprisingly well. Well, of course, because most of the time it is just vegetables. Amira's loyalties stay staunch. When Mama makes it, she usually puts it really spicy, and that's what we like about it. And she puts chicken. Spices again are not a meat product. Can with that? <laughs> If you are eating spicy chicken, are you eating, are you tasting the chicken or are you tasting the spice? Is the chicken just a vessel for the spice? Could the chicken be replaced with anything with a fibrous texture because you're actually enjoying the spice? The spice is what gives you the endorphin response in the body. So there is open to interpretation here and I think a lot of it is just what people are used to. And that's also fine. I'm not here to convert anyone from anything doing ever. I'm just here to make myself, mainly myself here, maybe by some extension, some of the people here that might be watching the video as well, just kind of like ask extra questions. Just like critically think about what it is and why we do things, why things are the way they are. I love questioning why, like why and how. That makes it even better. How do you feel about someone eating it or it going to waste? Um, okay. Oh. That is a really... I can see what you're saying there, like it's been bought. Yes. My small argument would be that if I was to eat meat and I was to enjoy it, that might overcome all the stuff that I know is good sense. I know that meat is tasty. I mean, I... I have enjoyed meat. I yeah. did enjoy meat when I was younger. Tea. I know it tastes good. I'm feeling Tea. fine about... There is something called freeganism. Have you heard about this? Have you seen it? Do you know what it is? Do you know, sis? It's when an item has already been bought, paid for, and already processed, and it just arrives in your house. You have an ethical question then to say, does this food go to waste, or do I eat it? I feel like there is a very, like, implicit question here of, if you eat it and enjoy it, and it's going to lead you down a really difficult path of like, maybe you won't come back from it, and then you're changing who you are as a human being, then I think you probably should not eat it. And that small amount of waste would actually be beneficial in the long term. However, if you don't have to ask yourself those questions and you know for a fact you can just eat whatever it is, a chicken burger, let's just say, random example, someone's been to McDonald's, coming over to your house, they've brought a chicken sandwich with them and you're just like, oh, I don't eat meat, but do you know what? Like, it's here, you've bought it for me, you've left it here. Sure, I'll eat it so it doesn't go to waste. If you're then like, do you know what? That was fine didn't change my life, not that interested, probably won't do it again. There's no problem with doing that either. I feel like being a vegetarian and being vegan is very much like a scale. I know, for example, when I was vegan for six years, when I think about the amount of meat products that I just didn't consume and the amount of dairy products at that time that I just didn't consume. If I try to sort of rationalize it as the way of like, how many cows was that? How many chickens was that? I know it doesn't really work to do that, but it sort of helps you contextualize what it is that you're doing. Because I didn't eat meat for any of those days, like if I had one portion of meat now, I, my, my overall net impact on the animal kingdom is still minus. Do you know what I mean? It's very capitalist to think of it as like a business sense, but sometimes it does actually help wrap your mind around difficult questions to ask like this, because let's say you replace meat with anything else. I know that not anything else is necessary, but for example, 
alcohol. In my life, I do not drink alcohol. And if someone was to buy me alcohol as a gift, it would come into my house, I would pour it straight away. That is a waste, but I also know that if I drank that alcohol, even if in a gift situation, that has potential to ruin my life. And I do not want to indulge in that. And I think the same thing can be said with like diet for like fun foods, for example. Like if someone comes over and brings an entire chocolate cake to my house, I'm going to find it so difficult to not completely ruin my diet by eating those, eating that chocolate cake. So quite often I will be like, do you know what? I don't want that chocolate cake. It's going to ruin the way my body works. There is a question to be asked here. And I think it very much comes down to your individual personage. What a difficult question, girls. No. I'm not saying yes to the meat. Everyone has a say in what they consume. Yes. I don't think that he's giving it much thought. I think it's I think more gave it a lot from his thought. wife. I think that was a lot of thought, actually. I don't agree at all there. It's the next morning. It's the and next Amira morning, girls. She's got out. environmental questions for Christy. Why do you think it will change Why do I the think, world? Why do I think it will change the world? Ooh. Um, well... That's a big question. I think the more people that do this, the more people that make these kind of changes, the much healthier and happier our planet's going to be. Yes. I used to create rubbish and not think about putting things in the bin and the, the harm that was causing with the creation of those products and where it was going afterwards. I didn't know. In our religion, we eat meat. So how are we... Because you believe what you believe, mm -hmm. and we believe what we believe. Mm -hmm. So how are we supposed to change not to eat meat when our belief is to eat meat? Do you think that your God wants to harm the planet? Well, that's another story. That's when Satan comes in. He's the one that's harming the planet. Uh, let's not say that, sis. Noah's Ark. <laughs> okay, so this is where it loses me because if you actually study the Bible as in depth as I have, you will find inconsistencies about certain teachings and about how cavalier God can be in regards to waste of human life. Uh, I think this isn't a question for someone who is adolescent to be able to understand the full scope of what it is that they are saying right now. I feel like that comes from parental influence and not from critical thinking about what you're being told. I think it's probably very confusing for Amira yes. because when you're a kid, you listen to your parents, yes, you very do that. what they say and you live as they live. And so to have this random stranger come in and suddenly say that the way you're doing things She's is maybe very not great, that must be really weird for her. Yes. She, because she can in reality, most people don't think that they are bad people. Most people think that they are, they're doing the best they can. And the system that we live in, which is whether that's a religious system, whether that's just pure capitalist system, whether that's even at your job or something like that, like a hierarchical system, you always believe that you are doing your best and you're making the best choice you can with what is available to you. And to have someone actually show that some of the decisions you're making is not actually that good for you or for those around you, it does create animosity and it creates that, no, how dare you don't know what I've been through. And I can totally understand that because I'm human. I do the same thing. It's incredibly human to want to be able to know that you're doing the best that you can. And sometimes we don't like being told that we're not, especially by another human. I do often wonder though, if religious people do think that Jesus is coming back or like there's going to be a resurrection or something, like what's gonna happen next? Like he's come back. And what if he does say like, everything you've done is wrong. This whole, the way that you're living is wrong. Plastic is evil. You've destroyed your home. Like what happens then? Live that way if she wants to live that way. She can tell us to make, like, maybe we might try it, but the way we want to live is the way we want to live and that's the way we want to keep it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you know? On the other side of town, Davian's left for work and under the new rules, Danielle introduces Savvy to the Bible, starting right at the start, as you do with Genesis. Interesting. What do you think about God creating the earth? Do you think that's cool? Mm. That is cool, way. Eh? I can't help but see it as spreading poison. I really can't help but see it as spreading poison. Religion had such a negative effect in my life. S profoundly negative. 
and I am so much more free by believing in the power of self. I, I do feel like I'm watching someone poison a child. But I don't believe. You don't believe in God. What do you believe in? Fairies. Yeah. Uh, Fairies. Unicorns. You might as well, sis. Never Fairies. been spotted in the same room. I'm going to look on the positive side and say it's a new experience for it's Savannah. It's a cultural and experience. She now understands more about it. Yeah. And um, no, I'm not too worried. I would Me? never be invited into someone's house and say, what you're doing is wrong, girls. I would never, 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 never do that because people are entitled to do whatever they want as long as it doesn't directly affect my life. While Christy's getting it and my rights. Teeth into a homemade eco remedy. We're making toothpaste. Do you want to watch? We have got three ingredients in here. Right. Coconut you know oil. Is that oil pulling? Coconut. Coconut oil. Yes. This is baking soda. No, we're not doing all that. Oh, it smells like bubble gum. Bubble gum? Yeah, it does. It's actually peppermint oil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's far too abrasive. Far too abrasive. Twin. Mix it all up. You're an expert at making toothpaste. Clever girl. I think it's ready. Subscribe. What do you think, Alia? Do you like it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's too abrasive, sis. No. Under her new rules, right, let's Danielle see. wants Savvy to learn the value of work and reward. Okay. Starting with she some entrepreneurial six, So let's not shit. start doing all that. <laughs> Thank you so oh, thank you, lady. Five thousand dollars. No money before, but I have had money. And now she's gonna go spend it on plastic and sweets. Style money, so I couldn't use it for anything. Right. Savvy and Danielle waste. Sorry, no what was that? I, so I have had. I've had no money before, but I have had money, but it was the old sty style money, so I couldn't use it for anything. An old style of money. Savvy and Danielle I waste see. no time and are straight down it's the shops money is to spend plastic. their pay. So annoying. It's cool, eh? It feels nice and squishy. There are plastic temptations at every turn. God, there are, aren't there? God, the hardest part of living under Danny's rules was probably that moment where Danny took her to the shops and she bought some things with Danny. If you want to plastic is a poison. Plastic is absolutely a poison to our bodies. It disrupts your endocrine system. And alongside some like birth control practices, there's even some evidence to suggest that it is solely the reason behind why the quality of men's sperm in the last 60 years is less than half. It's shocking. The plastic, no! Shut the money over to her. Whilst I'm surrounded by that. Well, I'm not even, I don't even have Having to go to the shop and buy something is giving her a taste of it, and she obviously enjoyed it to some degree. Um, so maybe that's been Everyone's detrimental Everyone's tops are so us, exciting. But gives us a chance to talk about it afterwards. Yeah. Me and Savannah have had so much fun. We've done bubble study, and then we've done car washing, and she earned some money so that we were shopping for lollies fun. and a toy. But, you know, each Hi, son. Own. Over at the Lawsons... Over at the Lawsons, woman! ...Ben's home and right. seems unimpressed with the state of the house. Right. What does that mean? Oh, dear. Christy's not able to keep up with what Danielle usually does. Well, yeah, of course. Basis. She's not used to it. Is dinner ready yet? Dinner is taking a lot longer than it normally would. It's not ready because I don't have the cookware that I usually use. Pretty hungry. You're hungry? Yes. All right, well, there's plenty of food in the pantry. I can make you a sandwich if you like. That'll be cool. Another sandwich? Yeah. All right, cool. What do you want on it? Uh, meat. Meat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a meat sandwich. Ben's patience is starting to wear thin. I'm hungry. Yeah, I know. I mean, his patience isn't really As wearing gets thin. Later and later, Christy reading. decides a lecture in recycling should take priority for our hungry family. Some of this stuff is recyclable. What stuff can go in the recycling bin? Um, that. No, that's banana. Banana is compostable. We've got a glass jar. This is recyclable. Paper is recyclable. Paper is not going to break down a landfill. It's going to emit methane, and that is a gas that contributes to climate change, the warming of our planet. So, yeah. 
Do you reckon there's a bit of room for She seems quite knowledgeable. I wonder what it is that she, like, how she found herself in this lifestyle. I really feel things are going to normal again. But I am a little bit tired of things that are happening, like my, my rubbish getting thrown in front of my front door. <laughs> He seems Next very stable swap. about it, though. He didn't. There was no explosion. There was no like fiery debate about anything. Although we are just about to see the reunion, girls. I, I don't understand. I'm a, I'm a simple woman. And the Hughes, their week on wife swap is very nearly done. Right. Time Daddy to pack I your things and go home. I honestly thought there'd be way like more explosions than this. Awesome. I don't have high hopes for meeting Christy. I can already tell what her personality is like. She doesn't have any high hopes. Before Christy yes. departs, there's some forgiving and forgetting required. Oh, little kitty. No more pooing in bedrooms, OK? Oh. It's OK, we're friends again. Two uncharacteristically tense pairs make their way to be reunited with their partners. She doesn't look pleased. And thoughts turn to how everyone will get on. I am really nervous about this table discussion. It's been a pretty crazy experience, right? Yeah, it has. It's, it's been crazy. Yesterday, I was excited about seeing Christy, and of course, I'm still really looking forward to seeing Christy, but yeah, I kind of got this nervous thing going on right now. I don't know why. Oh, prophecy, Mystic Meg! Hi, Jeep. Jeep. I'm good. Oh. It's very mild, wasn't it? Hi. Oh, they seem a bit more excited. Oh. Oh, I missed him so much. Okay, right, here we go. Are you ready, everybody? Hi. Thanks for Are you ready? Me with your family. Oh, no, you're they're very so brave. <laughs> <laughs> you're very brave for taking on four children. That was a lot. Your daughter, Savannah. Okay, so they're holding hands. Sweetness. Your kids are was so welcoming and really, really cool. Like, they just kind of rolled with it for the most yeah. part. Um, I think at points, Amira was a little bit unsure, but she's kind of hard to read sometimes. A little bit quiet or a little bit kind of, who are you coming in and telling my family how to live? You know? Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. I guess my first impressions were that you guys maybe just aren't aware of some of the issues that, that I'm aware of. But then the truth starts to come out. There was a lot of plastic packaging, a lot of... The truth starts to come out. The narrator's trying to make it more drama. ...to the rubbish bin that shouldn't go into the rubbish bin. Um, you have an immense amount of time on your hands. <laughs> um, so I found it very hard for, for the first three days was probably the hardest because he... But the funny thing is, is that you didn't have much to do, did you? Yes. Because we just didn't really make Well, that's the mess. thing. I was kind of No, you just don't do much. Oh! Right, so we don't make a mess. I was, I was talking to Ben about this. Like, in our house, we don't have pets. You don't do much. Oh! See, this is where I feel like a lot of the conversations of... Uh, um, like sustainability come into because I feel like a lot of people are so busy that they'll say things like, well, I just don't have the time to do it. I just don't have the time to think about the environment. And it's like, well, if you don't have the time to think about the environment, the environment's not going to have time to think about you or your children or your children's children. I think, you know, in the future, we're going to look back at people that are living now, including myself, and we're going to say, what selfish people they were because they didn't consider their own impact on the world around them. Oh, okay, it's getting a bit explosive, girls. There was a bit of venom in that one, wasn't there? Pets cause a mess. We've got one child and, and it's, she's much easier to manage and she kind of, yeah, so it's just a lot less to deal with, I guess. I had the best experience with Sammy. What did you guys do? Sammy might not think so. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, OK. And these guys went to Jeff and Jenny's and washed their car. And then she got to go to the shop and shop. spend in yeah, what she wanted. Yeah. What did she buy? Plastic. She bought a plastic slap thing oh, with it because it was pink. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hate that stuff. I personally couldn't do it. Which bit? Live under your guys' strict rules. Which particular rules? Like, uh, j just the way you live in general. We have no idea what you're talking about right Can now. Can you be more specific in your <laughs> Well, you know how you just naturally live at home? Yeah. And the way you live, I couldn't 
adhere to that. The whole thing the or whole, particular bits? I think the whole thing, <laughs> okay. except for the plastic part. Love the plastic part, Okay, can do that. So it's the food bit you didn't like? Vegetarian it's fine, but nutritional values, it's not there with the vegetarian. Yes oh, it is, good. yes, yes it is. I'm sorry, the only thing that you don't get from uh, a vegetarian based diet is B12, and B12 you don't even get from meat, you get from bacteria, so. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> So we done Bible study. How does she respond to that? Are you okay with this? Sure. She was really happy with it. She was fine with it. So what did you do with it? I read the verses from the Bible and we drew pictures. Oh, she, would, she would love that because she loves reading and she loves drawing. What concepts did you discuss? So we started off with God uh -huh. creating the earth. And she, yes, but she did also say, I believe in fairies and unicorns, so. So I had this moment, I didn't think I'd say this to you face to face, but it was really dark. But like, it's literally, my emotions got hold of me and you were looking down on me smiling with this grin that suddenly started looking like a bit evil. Religion is evil. The money, and especially, ah! she was like, and Savannah can buy anything she wants. And she just looked at me and smiled and I thought, I thought she looked like the devil. <laughs> But you know, our family's not going to start eating meat. Ethically, I have major issues with it. We are doing such horrific harm to our environment with all of our reliance on animal agriculture. It's just damaging our, our planet. I want my daughter. Oh, they to have grow glazed up over. They don't where care. She's not swimming through shit. I want her to grow up in a place where we're not being victimised by the results of our stupid actions and you know climate change and stuff. This is a direct result of our consumption. Regardless of what you believe, whether there's a God or not a God, your kids' health are at risk. I feel a bit thinking about this only because you are eliminating one of the issues when there's so many other issues like within your own home that can help stop, oh, do look, you know what I mean? I, again, I'm not claiming to be perfect and we have yeah. still got a long way to go. Yeah. But you have to start somewhere. You can't yes. just give up and go, oh, this is just the way that humans are. This just keeps growing up the planet. Yeah, that's We right. can't continue like this. She provides a very good argument. Like, she hasn't said, oh, you have to live the way I'm living. She's just said, I'm trying to be better. And honestly, I do feel like one of the ways that I try and live my life is by example. I, I'd like to think of myself as very welcoming, very understanding. I like to try and see points of an argument that makes sense. But I also know the value of the argument of experts versus opinion. Look, I'll be honest. I um, would like to see you think how yeah, this is going to come across. I want to say I'd like to see you think more rationally about some stuff. But yeah, I really um, want to thank you for the experience. It's opened my oh, mind. Oh, it's difficult, isn't it? It's so it made difficult. made me appreciate my family a lot more. Wow. Oh, there are I can breathe. It's sort of like a religion too. So we're, you know, both evangelising sort of, you know, our lifestyles and, and... Yeah. I want to sit down and not have chaos around me and not have weird smells around me and not have to be tiptoeing around people because I think some of the things they're doing are weird. This has made me appreciate you more, <laughs> to be honest, I promise. Yeah, it's like... Been, yeah, it's been hard <sighs> without you. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> right, is this the end? What happens next? Goodness me. We don't learn any of the rules in this bit, do we? We don't be like, they did this and then they lived happily ever after. Did you make me a sandwich? Yeah. Oh, it's yummy. I don't think the Lawsons will adopt any of our lifestyle. Um, I think they're one-sided. Danielle attempted to As convert my daughter. <laughs> Good luck what? to her. Attempted to convert my daughter. Oh. <laughs> Good luck to her. Um, she's left some plastic waste behind. That's because she's accustomed to a certain lifestyle. Hopefully she's going to go home and Ben's going to have a bit more of a chat to her about that stuff. I feel sorry for Savvy. Yeah. She'll always be on my heart, that's for sure. But I got that experience with her, so that's one thing she will be able to remember, and they can't take that away from her. Yeah! Ooh, no! I've got some thoughts, my loves. Did you enjoy your little pillow? Did you enjoy your little 
below. So my loves, I have some thoughts about this episode. So I have a feeling I'm probably going to upset a few of you that regularly watch my content. And I want you to understand something about me. As someone who's grown up visibly queer, visibly LGBT, visibly different, I was persecuted by religion. I was told daily that people of my kind go to hell. There is no future for us. We are demons. So that is why I am the way that I am. I understand that religion can be an in club, an in club. And if you are the way that everyone says you should be, you're in that club. If you're not, you're out. So when I criticize certain aspects of ritual associated with organized religion, it is purely from an outsider perspective. And you do not have to listen to me. You do not have to like what I have to say. But this is 100% free content on the internet and you don't have to engage with it if you don't want to. I will say I found this episode very interesting to watch because it's almost a masterclass in watching people have to face things that they find very uncomfortable. These are two fundamentally opposing lifestyles. One basically is the worship of mother nature and the other is worship of deity. And I feel like those two things, although they sound very similar, are fundamentally incompatible because when you have people that have such deep rooted beliefs that what they are entitled to on this planet is their entitlement, you can never change that. You can only ever say, what about if you had a little bit less of that entitlement? Whereas on the other hand, people that perhaps worship mother nature can sometimes feel a little bit militant because unfortunately to be a human living at this point in this world right now, is to be a destructive force. Humanity is a destructive force on this planet. You can literally look outside your window right now and think maybe a thousand years ago, 2000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, the entire area was just wild fauna and flora. We have domesticated ourselves. We have walled our own beliefs in to make us believe that we are the most important creatures that have ever walked this earth. And in several million years time, we will be but a memory. But it is very difficult to see those sorts of conversations happen. So, I don't know, through the guise of reality TV, I don't think that's the right place to have them. What do you think, little biscuit? No thoughts, only vibes? No thoughts, just chicken for biscuit. So my lovelies, I think I've said quite a lot in this episode so far. As I say, you don't have to agree with everything I say. You don't even have to agree with the way that I react to certain things that I have experienced negatively in my life. I actually feel like a sense of community is very valuable for lots of people and religion quite often gives that to people. It gives people a sense of purpose and it gives people a sense of community and like believing in something bigger than themselves, which does provide beneficial systems in day-to-day -day living. However, I will say that you can go around the world and it will be a different God under a different name. And any time in history will be different gods under different names. So my lovelies, let me know what you think about what we've seen in today's episode and today's video, because quite honestly, I feel like this is a stark contrast to the last episode of Why Swap New Zealand, but I'm sure it will create just as much discourse in the comments. And I look forward to reading what you guys think. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here, my lovelies. Yes, you can. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Introverted Unicorn. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning woman on the go. And if you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, what can they do, Biscuit? Yeah, go follow her on Twitch. It's Luxaria Plays and she streams every Monday and Thursday, my loves. Yes, that's correct, little Biscuit. And as always, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Orcos Samoji, Beebles32, Shell Herman, Christy Crownover, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Danielle, Elizabeth Stone, Eric Castillo, Fable and Flourish, Jen Martin, Jennebeth Herman, Caitlin Wright, Laura Jane, Laura Jane again, Les Banana, Lizette Cares, Millie Hammond, Min Min TM, Mariah Sherman, Novembrix. Paolo Rivera, Ryan Vita, Slampire Queen, Steffi Tech, The Chaos Collective, Victoria Carella, and Zoe Sevier. And you know what, my lovelies? I'm gonna leave it on the notes of... Conflict can come in many different shapes, sizes, and different varieties. And I think what's actually very important is to understand every living creature on this planet deserves to be here. Don't they, Mr. Biscuits? And with that, I'll see you in the next one, my lovelies. Uh. I don't like it when you touch me.